What the heck was that? What was that? What the heck was that? Wait a minute. Why are my GPUs on the ground? RTX 3070s. There's one. There's another one. That's not a GPU. What is that? What is this thing? What is this? It kicked out my GPUs? What is this? Model in a box? Matches? What the fuck? What are we doing in this video? We're here talking about the Pinecone Matches in a box. This small little ASIC miner that makes a ridiculous amount of money that you never heard of before. Here's what we're not doing in this video, in case you were hopeful. We're not going to cover the setup and configuration and the noise and the... Oh, like, listen, look at it. It's a black box. Just looks like all the rest of them. Has fans and a chip inside it. Takes power. Makes noise. Needs to have networking. Done. There's your overview. Configuration. If you're watching this video, you probably know how to set up mining pools and get to dashboards and IP addresses. Not going to cover that. But if you do need it, if you're new, welcome. If you bought one, good luck. I'm going to leave links down in the video description to amazing other content creators who covered all that stuff in great detail. So go check them out. So Mike, if we're not doing that stuff in this video, what the heck am I doing here? Why did I click on this thing? I don't know. Welcome though. Here's what we're going to cover in this video. We are going to cover the profitability of this thing, the actual revenue. Is it real? What's going to happen? What am I going to do with the money that it might make? And then we're going to take a look at its project briefly. I'm always curious. I'm always curious just to see what problem are they trying to solve and do I find it interesting? So we're going to take a look at that later in this video as well. So if any of that stuff interests you, stick around and we're going to have some fun together. So where does the story begin? Where does my story with this machine that I never heard of start? It starts with my buddy Steven from ASL Miner reaching out to me. And Steven says, hey, Mike, would you like to review the Inabox ASIC Miner? And I had no idea what the heck he was talking about. I'm like, did I miss something? How did I miss this? I like pride myself on proof of work. It's kind of like my thing. But I missed it. And so did seemingly everybody else. But I said, yeah, yeah, send it over. And I took a look on their website. We're on it right now. ASL Miner, trusted resource if you need to buy anything. I don't know if you should buy this one. Totally up to you. Watch the rest of this video. Matches in a box. Does 850 mega hash for 480 watts. Let's check in on that wattage. What are we doing right now? I think we're doing more than that. Doing like 508, something around there. So anyway, where was I? 480 watts, and there it is. There it is. It's it's made by, I guess, I don't know, Pinecone or Matches. It's not like Gold Shell. It's not Ice River. It's just some other manufacturer. Maybe they're related to manufacturers we're familiar with. I don't know, but I've never heard of them. And you're definitely looking at that price right now is $3,000. And it says that they have... 999 of them in stock. I don't know if that's a real number or if that's like a fake inflated marketing number, but it was a thousand earlier. It was a thousand earlier today. So maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. How much does this thing make? I said it makes a ridiculous amount of money. Over on ASIC minor value with a 10 cent electric rate, this machine makes $33.30 a day, making it by far the most profitable cryptocurrency mining machine on the entire world. There it is. In my basement. No reason for it to be making this amount of money. I don't think it's going to be for long. Here's why. What's going to happen, because it always happens, is that these machines will ship out because people will buy them. If you're one of those people, let me know down in the comments section. I'd love to talk to you. People will buy these, and as they ship out, there's going to be more hash rate on the network. People are going to sell the coin, which is going to su suppress the price. There's less piece of the pie for it to go around, and that pie is worth less. So then the revenue you're going to take in is going to be much lower, and then the price is going to drop significantly, and that's usually like the end. 
and then somebody will make a better machine and then just it just repeats over and over and over again. Why is it $3,000? It's $3,000 because it makes that amount of money, $33.30 a day, and it's doing that with the price of the coin being 13 cents right now. Looking at the seven-day chart here on CoinGecko, I mean, it's slowly going up. When I go back to the max chart, which goes back to early July, it went from two to three cents all the way up to an all-time high of about almost 14 cents. So what would have to happen for this machine to keep making that amount of money is that price would have to keep going up and up and up and up dramatically to take in the influx of all the people buying machines. But if that keeps happening, then they're going to make more machines and more people are going to buy them. And it's, it's eventually going to come to a place where it won't be profitable. It just, it always does. So know that it's a race against time every time. Okay, what else do we need to look at? Uh, I guess I should show you the dashboard so you can see this thing's actually mining right now. Here it is doing an average of reported 900 mega hash, which is even more than it's advertised for doing a little bit more power as well. There's only a single pool that you can actually mine with this thing, and that's called Yates Pool. So its entire hash rate is centralized on one mining pool unless you're doing mining to your own node. And so here I am, there's my balance. I'm gonna refresh this right now, 77 any in it? I, I don't know, any? I guess there are any, so 77. So what is that actually? equal if I go down here coin geckos calculator that's ten dollars so that's ten dollars and this machine has been up four hours or so four hours of mining has made me about ten dollars so like that's pretty good maybe a little more than four hours maybe like six hours maybe like six hours that's pretty good that matches exactly what I should be mining in profit according to ASIC miner value so now that I've mined some of this, what happens next? Well, let's take a look at the markets. There's essentially two. There's XT.com and then there's uh, MEX here. And uh, neither of them work where I'm located here in the United States. So what I had to do was uh, VPN it. I VPNed it. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble or what I'm going to try. I VPNed it. I created a deposit address on xt.com, I'm going to test a single deposit and see if I can withdraw from there since I'm not supposed to be on there and using a VPN before I continue. But that is one of the downsides right now is none of the exchanges that support this actually can op you, you can't get into them as a US citizen. But what I'm hoping to do and my plan is we're gonna go over to their market here so I'm going to, to have it mine and the pool payout directly to this website. And then I'm going to instantly convert it into Tether and see if I can withdraw or if I get blocked. And then I'll figure out another solution. Maybe just throw it in a wallet uh, if I get blocked on there. But then I'm going to throw it all in Tether and just probably throw it in USDC and then send it over to Coinbase or maybe just stack some Bitcoin or Ethereum. I've been wanting to get more of um, with what this machine generates. So that, that's the initial play. And then I was just like, well, should I hold some? You know, is this project interesting? Is it trying to solve anything? And so I went over to their website and like their main project is Initverse. And then on there, one of their products is the Initchain, which is the blockchain and the mining where everything happens. And I was just like, okay, like what is this thing doing? So I took a look at their white paper. It's always a great place to start just to learn a little bit more about what they are trying to solve here. So we're gonna take a look at the parts I found interesting together. The core infrastructure of Interverse in a chain is a high performance, stable and secure smart chain that pioneers the integration of TFHE, fully homomorphic encryption over the Taurus technology into EVM Ethereum virtual machine through its innovative TVFH EVM in a chain enables encrypted data computation, ensuring complete data privacy. It also invented the efficient low gas VersaHash algorithm 
paired with some other stuff that is beyond my scope right now. So I was like, okay, they're, they're trying to solve a privacy thing. And I think that is a real problem to solve. You know, when you think about blockchain, like Bitcoin is permissionless, but it isn't private. We think about like Zcash that brought privacy to currency that is permissionless. And then Ethereum brought smart contracts, but all that stuff is public. Like you don't necessarily want that. There is there's a real place for privacy in smart contracts. And actually one of my favorite projects that I've been tracking for a while is Alio. And they're trying to solve all of that through the use of zero knowledge proofs. So I was like, well, what the heck is, is different here? Like, I guess that made me feel like, okay, there are, there is like a problem to solve. And like, there's projects coming out to like actively try to solve those problems. And, and here it talks a lot about some of the stuff that I was just mentioning. And then it calls out ZK proofs, zero knowledge proofs, which are an amazing thing. And it says, although current privacy technologies such as zero knowledge proofs have achieved breakthroughs in privacy protection, significant limitations remain. The computational cost of this technology is high, which is true, and the verification process requires a large amount of resources, I think is also true. Existing privacy protection solutions increase performance overhead by an average of two to 400% which greatly limits their application in large blockchain networks. Furthermore, ZK proofs lack scalability, making it difficult to maintain efficiency during extensive on-chain interactions. So they're going like head on saying like the one way that privacy in smart contracts and computations trying to be solved with ZK proofs, it ain't it. It's not going to work. We have, in fact, a better thing which is using encryption for computational power, computations. And like, I guess that's interesting. I guess that's interesting. So I'm going to learn a little bit more about this project. Does this make me want to hold this coin right now? No, I'm, I'm probably going to dump it all. Sorry, in adverse. Um, I guess the only other thing I, I like to do when I research projects because it's helpful is like, just kind of like see like, how long they've been around and they do have, let me see if I could find it here. I don't know if I have it up right now. Yeah. They do have this roadmap, which goes back to 2022 where they initiated the Interverse project and completed the development of basic functionalities. And then they see, they really started ramping up in late 2023. So they've been around for years and I was like, okay, is that, is that true? So I went over and found, like search on YouTube to see if there's like conferences or interviews or anything. And they have their own, YouTube channel. So I went and checked that out. Let's see the oldest videos, uh, which go back. Let's just take a look at the actual date it says two years, November 15th. Yeah. I mean, pretty much two years and a month, a little, little less than a month. These go back. I mean, I'm not going to watch this video. It's looks really interesting there, but, uh, it seems like it's a real project with a real history and a real problem to solve. Whether or not it makes it is anybody's guess. Most of them don't. The large, large majority of them don't go anywhere. If you want to buy one of these machines, obviously there'll be a link down in the description and the pinned comment. You probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't buy this. It's, um, it came out of nowhere. It makes too much money right now. Everything is going to go down. ASL Miner's great, though. They carry a lot of other really cool stuff. I've worked with them. I've met them in like person, like real people. So if you are looking for any other mining equipment or anything at all, uh, they are definitely a trusted resource. And if you need any help, I can connect you directly with them. So just reach out to me, contact at redfoxcrypto.com. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave some links on the screen for some really cool home Bitcoin miners. One is a Bitax. If you don't have one, I actually just got like my first one. It's really cool. I highly recommend it. Super affordable. Now, and then the other one is going to be just my kind of like favorite plug and play at home Bitcoin miner, um, which is made by Kane in there. And you'll be able to check that one out. But otherwise, please take care of yourself and each other. And I'll see you in one of those videos.